everyone wants to know how we manage to write together and why we write about the things we do. But in fact, um, my mother was an artist, although she was a 50s mom, and uh, so she was home, but she was always painting. I had the best art supplies in the neighborhood, in my school, and I took uh, studio art myself until I realized that that was not going to be a career for me. Uh, and then I uh, decided to focus on writing. But I took studio art right the way through school, and my first job uh, in high school was as an assistant teacher in an art program. So I, I just, it just always seemed natural. And since Jen's husband owns a gallery and she was in a graduate program studying um, art, what was it called? Art Aesthetic education. A aesthetic education, not. But it, we, it was one of the many things we had in common, so it just fit. Well, th there's more to this story than that. Always. Uh, at the time, I was teaching in a program, a graduate program at Webster University, where we were teaching teachers how to use the arts, all the arts, as a part of their curriculum, classroom curriculum. So although we did have music teachers and art teachers, we had a lot of classroom teachers. And my area was poetry and the visual arts. So there was a certain kind of way of looking, a, a, in a sense, a, a way to start a conversation with art that was specific, beginning with what do you see and ending up with what, what is the um, expressive content of the work of art, looking at color, line, shape, and texture. Anyway, uh, to make a long story short, Sandra went on to be an editor at another publishing house, and I continued writing um, at Farrar Strauss. But my daughters grew up and left the house, and, I, and I'd written seven novels about middle grade and teenagers, and I kind of wanted to stretch my brain in a new direction. And Sandra and I got together for lunch. We intermittently kept up a relationship. And we started talking about what I wanted to do next and what she was interested in. And she said, I love this idea about writing a book about looking at art for kids, uh, but did you show it to your editor? And I said, yes, they're not interested in, in my idea of writing nonfiction. And Sandra said, well, I love the idea and I think I know of a of a publisher who would, and an editor, who would be very interested in it. It turned out, George Nicholson at Delacorte. And I said to Sandra at the time, because there was a, a way we have always communicated and had conversations going back and forth that seemed inspiring and to, resonated with me in terms of a, a friendship and intellectual kind of uh, exchange. And I said, well, if you sell this idea, let's write it together. She said, I'll do it if we can write it together. And I had quit my job because I thought it was time to do something else. I just quit it cold and I was working in the darkroom and trying to write. And when she said that, I just, it just was right. Plus, I knew that George was uh, running a big program at ALA on art and he had, We'd had dinner because he wanted me to come to work for him, and I said, no, it's a step. I can't. I'm doing something else now. No more editing. And uh, he'd explained this thing, that there was a hole in the book market. There were very few art books. and just The gap in the bookshelf. The big, famous gap in the bookshelf that had been identified, and they were going to discuss it at ALA. And so we said, well, we can help fill that gap. And we got to work. Uh, we, the I first book was The Painter's Eye, Learning to Look at Contemporary American Art. And we think that young people can be taken by the hand and led from the first pages of the book to the end in nonfiction by telling stories. And that's how they first learn to look at a painting or a sculpture. George O'Keefe said once, 
and I'm going to paraphrase because uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but she was teaching in Canyon, Texas, and most of her students had never seen a painting. Some of them had never even seen a reproduction of the painting. And she was teaching art to these would-be teachers. It was a two-year school. And she wrote later that teaching people about art changes everything. It changes where you put the doors in a building. It changes the way you part your hair. It changes the way you put a stamp on an envelope. So it's not just about painting and art. It's about the whole way you see the world.